I don't know how many of you know much about Africa. But really, Africa is the new frontier in development. And of course, Africa and most of the countries in Latin America and most of the countries in Asia it still faces a lot of problems. And that is how I grew up, facing different challenges. I was born in a rural village in the western part of Kenya. Here, we, we didn't have electricity at home and even at school. I was using a tin kerosene lamp uh, for my studies. These are like the kind of lamps I was using for study at night. And I used, I used to walk several kilometers to school every day. In those days, we didn't have computers. I saw my first television when I was in, uh, in my, f my like 13th grade. I saw the first computer when I was in my final, final year in high school. We didn't have PlayStations and uh, any of the, the different gadgets that the kids have these days. We made our own toys because, of course, as kids, we had to play, but there, there was no one who could provide you with anything. So we had to be creative and make any kind of gadget to use. And I was lucky because in my family, my parents could afford um, kerosene most of the times. All my neighbors, they were much, much less fortunate. The parents could not afford kerosene. And so, the kids were being literally punished in school because they haven't done their homework. And yet, the reason is they didn't have kerosene at home. And in those days, if you don't complete your homework, you are literally punished in school. The teacher will, you, you'll find a teacher with a well-prepared stick ready to feast on you. And so a lot of kids got frustrated and dropped out of school. <coughs> and so this brings me to, the, to this question. How do we really create development to be viral among low-income communities. And this is very interesting, because having grown up in such a community where people literally were trying to survive every day, it was a challenge that I saw every day, accessing health care, food, water, and everything else was quite a problem. And I've seen many organizations trying to do different uh, work to address uh, problems that affect low-income communities. For, for example, in Kenya, you find uh, organizations trying to build, uh, to sell water purifiers to communities. So I asked myself, if a person gets his water for free every day, how do you expect that person to now spend extra money and yet he doesn't even have enough for food to buy that water purifier? I've seen and I've actually been approached by one of the celebrities 
I'm not going to name that they because I have I'm working with different communities that they sponsor various communities so that they can be able to buy cooking stoves, improved cooking stoves. So here's the scenario. If I earn two dollars in a day and I buy food and I have to buy medicine, I have to uh, buy the basic necessities, kerosene in my house. And every day I go into my farm, I cut down a tree, I use it for cooking, so I don't really spend any money on, on energy for cooking. So, how will you convince me to spend money on buying this cooking stove? And if you look at the necessities that are there, people um, will rather spend on food, kerosene, and healthcare. Those are the basic needs that they, they, they have every day. So what they wish to have is to have improved lighting. They wish to have improved method of cooking. They, need to ha they wish to have cleaner water. But that's just a wish. They can't afford. And, and so, that is why I came up with a different model. And you may be wondering how that, this can be able to work in countries like Spain. Uh, I know we have sc uh, schools trying to adapt bilingual languages in education. So, how can a teacher who doesn't really understand English be able to teach students chemistry in English? So where do you start first? I know a lot of us talk about the environment. We take care of our bodies every day. We want to be clean. But how many of us throw trash out of our cars? And so, in this model, what we do is, first of all, is to engage communities. And so, it can be everywhere. Have you ever asked your neighbor what will really make your life better today? So that is the first thing. That is the first point that makes a difference. And as you can see, we can be able to source funds, be able to make a gadget that can be used in the communities. And then we have to involve communities in implementing the idea. And of course, you have to let communities feel like whatever they are doing is going to solve their problem for a long period. If a family spends let's uh, about 30% of their income daily on kerosene. If that small amount of money can be saved over a period as a group, it can be able to, to be used to set up something that will eventually spur growth within the communities. So, if you have 30 cents of a dollar, 10 cents of a dollar every day, within three months, you are able to make 50 cents of a dollar every, every day. That is how you, we've been able to 
make development work in the communities. And I was lucky enough to be able to meet and interact with various people in different countries. And uh, there's an organization that wanted to implement maternal, to really reduce maternal health in communities. And so, uh, they've been building hospitals. You can be able to build hospitals, you can be able to do everything. But if you look at traditionally, mothers were, being, were giving birth through village midwives. So, where do you really start? You can either build 10 hospitals or either build five so hospitals and use the other funds to teach village midwives better ways of giving birth. So that's what makes the difference between my macro and micro development. And when we engage each other, we start conversations. We are able to create trust among us ourselves. Communities are looking for simple solutions. Simple solutions that can be able to, they can relate to in their own lives. More often, when you have an economic crisis, we all look upon the government and every, every other institution. But what exactly are we doing ourselves to make that difference? It starts with simple solution. And there's a critical thing that is important when you're looking at making development to be viral in communities. How many communities really want you to come and tell them that this is what's going to work for you? How many communities think that they have better solutions. That is what is happening. Everybody is coming and telling everyone that this is what is much better. But really, you just need to have, give simple instructions and allow everyone to be able to come up with their own ideas. One of the simple things is we all want to work less if our bosses are not around. Do we ever take that initiative to do more, much more when our bosses are not around? And so that's exactly what happens when you go into communities and you tell them that this is what's going to work. But if the communities feel like they own and it's going to benefit them, it's a simple thing that they can relate to, then they become like their own bosses. They want to, to do something that will change their own lives. And like for us, we use communities as, as our quality control. They can be able to directly say, what you're doing is not good. 
and this is what you want. And here's another scenario. If I don't spend money on other necessities, I only spend money on uh, basically buying a few stuff in the house. I have my small farm. I go into the garden every day, get food. I don't have any other source of income, really. And you come to me and you give me, micro, and you give me microfinance to start a business. What do you think I'll be able to use that money for? Most of us in that situation, we shall simply use that money to buy that extra thing we've ever wanted. Because really we didn't, we didn't have in our mind the idea of starting a business. And so, communities need just to be shown basic ideas about how they can be able to create their own enterprises. And they can be able to use fine resources within themselves. It's not all about giving resources to people in terms of financial resources. It's about creating an environment where communities can be able to create their own resources within themselves. And one of the biggest assets, of course, is just sharing ideas. One of the greatest assets is sharing our own knowledge every day, asking questions to our neighbors. That is one of the greatest assets. And that is why I always believe that when you want to really make change is to make a person, to show a person that he, ha he can be able to succeed irrespective of the circumstances that they come from. And <coughs> just finally, I want to ask all of you to think about what will, what will you do if suddenly you go to a gas station and you don't have, there's no gas in that gas station. What will you do? Thank you. Thank you, Evans, for your inspiring uh, message to us. By the way, apart from uh, writing you a check, we don't have any money. We have a no-profit organization here. Well, our sponsors have money, but you know, <laughs> we, we already uh, took all their money from their pockets for yeah. organizing this beautiful event. Yes, sir. What can we do to help your project, to spread in other areas? Uh, as I've said, anything starts with conversations. So if all of you right now can tweet about what you've learned, that's the first step. Then, of course, you need to ask yourself, what have I seen in my community that can be able to be modeled around the same idea? Yeah. Do you need any volunteers? We have all the team of TED. <laughs> they are a little bit stressed today. <laughs> Probably a few months in Africa with you. They will relax a little bit more. Yes. So we will send you some volunteers. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Really.